Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Mike from MoboxGraphics.com and in this video tutorial, I'm just gonna be showing you how to do this animated icon reveal slash morph slash transition in After Effects and it will be using some Illustrator so you might learn something there along the way. Um, but what I wanna do is for first let you know that this is a combination of two animated GIFs that I found online into one. So the first one is made by Roman. Um, you could find him on Dribble, and it's kind of like this paperclip design. And then the second one is this upload design by user Colin on Dribble as well. So be sure to go check them out, follow them, and you should be able to find some really cool animations in their um, portfolios. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. Starting out here in uh, Illustrator, not After Effects, I'm just going to create the paperclip first. So um, over here, I'm just going to make sure that the fill is none and the outline is black, which is fine. And I'm going to start by creating a small um, circle and I'm going to increase the, the fill or the um, stroke radius. And I'm just going to hit control. C. Actually, first thing I should probably do is center up the object. And now I'm going to hit control C, control V, center up that object. And now what I'm going to do is holding shift and alt, I'm just going to expand one and just make it slightly bigger than the other. I'm just going to select both of them and drag them down. And now what I want to do is I'm going to duplicate this large one, control C, control V, and move it right into the center and grabbing the left side, holding uh, holding shift. I'm just going to move it until it looks like that. So now what I can do is I can just drag this shape up and now we have the most of the big portions of the uh, paper clip done now. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come up to this um, direct selection tool, select this, select these circles, and I'm just going to select this point, delete, select that point, delete, select that point, delete. And now I can grab the pen tool and then just start connecting these layers together. And then create, holding shift, creates a straight line. So there you have it. We have our paperclip done. I'm just gonna select all these layers. Um, actually, not all these layers. That's one single layer. Um, by removing the bottom of the circle and then connecting the points, it creates it into one shape, which you want. If it's not one shape, you're gonna have problems. So make sure it is one shape. I'm just gonna increase the stroke width and select stroke and make sure everything is nice and rounded. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab the pen tool and on this inside layer holding shift, I'm just going to, to drag this out until it's about right there. And so if you can't tell already, basically what I'm doing is I have a check mark here and it's kind of within this uh, paper clip. So now what I can do, it's all one shape layer, which is good. I could just hit file, save and I will save it here. Uh, I have multiple paper clips because I've done this multiple times to make sure that it's done right. I will still for sure run into problems, but I'm just gonna save this as paperclip v4. Um, again, this will be probably, I don't know if I've said it already, a long tutorial. So just dragging the file into After Effects here, it will pop up as paperclip v4, and I'm just going to drag it into my composition. And now I'm just gonna right click, create shapes from vector layer, open this up and make sure I can add trim paths and that everything looks good, which it does. So perfect. So basically just to wrap things up right here, um, I created my, ic my icon with all of my icons on one path. So my, I have my arrow, I have my check mark and I have my paper clip. So now I can just delete this Illustrator layer and I can start animating. So to start, I'm just gonna create a new null object and then just parent this to the null object just so I could scale it down and, and mess around with it um, kind of as so I don't mess with the layer itself. So to start off, we're going to need a um, an arrow. So for this paperclips trim paths, I'm just going to 
I'm actually going to set a keyframe for both the start and the end and hit you on the keyboard and just so now I see these. And now I just want to trim the paths until I have my arrow. So I'm just going to make this null object invisible as to make it so it doesn't get in the way. And I think what I'm going to also do is move the anchor point kind of more like right there and rotate this. Should probably just use the null. Oh, I'll actually rotate it from here. So I'm going to need to rotate it by negative 45. And now I have a much better, much clearer picture of how much I need to do for the trim paths. Just opening up this grid to make things easier. You can see that that looks just about right, which is good. So now I'm just going to create kind of the center piece of this arrow. So just making sure the colors match. Selecting this layer, moving the anchor point to the top. Let's see, just like that. Then moving it right there. So now we can see how much more thick thickness we need to add and the length looks probably pretty good, maybe a little bit long. And for this, to make, to make this shape layer have a rounded end, you just open it up, go to contents, shape, stroke, and go to rounded cap, just like that. And now we can even see a better example of how thick it needs to be. And that is exactly identical in weight. So I could actually increase the stroke of both of these. I think that looks about right. Just drag that down. Okay, so now we have our arrow. Um, and we have this layer that I can use, I can use the scale property here. So that's what I need. So I'll set a keyframe there. And so now we want to turn this into a check mark the best that we possibly can. So I'm just going to move up to one second. I'm going to scale this to zero in the Y direction. I'm going to rename this um, arrow stem. I'm going to rename this paper clip or icon. And for our icon, I'm now just going to increase the length of that. And we will need to rotate this. And if you'll notice, this is going to look backwards. So what I actually want to do also is, um, let's see, if I make this a 3D layer, I could change the orientation. Oh, whoops, wrong layer. This icon layer, I can make it 3D, and now I could change its orientation to make sure it's right. So I'm going to do, um, I should probably do it before I start rotating things, huh? So I will need I will need the paper clip to be in that angle now that I noticed um, that. So now when I rotate this, 
but rotate it negative 180. One thing that I need to do is I need to parent this stem to the icon. And you can see there. So um, another thing that we need to do also, I know there's multiple things that need to get done here, but we need to move, have the position change. So selecting this, I'm gonna hit P on the keyboard, U on the keyboard to see all my keyframes, J on the keyboard to bounce back. And I'm just going to center this up. Just like that. So that looks pretty good. I'm not gonna worry about smoothing anything out yet. So far that looks pretty good. And now I want this to turn into a paperclip. So I'm just going to set keyframes all the way all down the line and go about a second down and make that go all the way to 100 and then bring this to about just before it bends to be the, the check mark. And so let's see what way we rotated this. We rotated it in the negative direction. So I'm gonna to continue to rotate this in the negative direction until we get to a full spin. Which this would be negative 45. And then I can move this over. Make sure it's centered. Just like that. So, okay. So the main animation is complete. So that looks pretty good. And I know this paperclip does look backwards, but it's a paperclip and there's really no particular way that it's supposed to look. So now we have our animations done. So now all we need to do is kind of make this look better in every single way by adding smoothing and changing the timing of these keyframes. So I actually don't want this to go at the exact same time. So this is, what this is, is the stem, or not the stem, but the long side of the arrow. So I'm just gonna kind of move this over. Just drag these out of the way. So I kind of want it to stop and then kind of keep keep moving, so keep the momentum moving. So I'm just gonna select all these keyframes and I'm gonna add some motion here using my motion tool. If you don't have that, you could see that, the, that they kind of look like this. So you could just drag these, these over to make your graph look like this in the graph editor. So now we have something that kind of looks like that. I'm just gonna highlight all these holding alt. I'm just gonna make the animation go a little bit faster. Just like that. And if you had motion blur, see what this looks like. I think I want the tip of the arrow to kind of be more in the motion. Kind of like that. So that looks good. And one thing I actually notice is that I kind of want my arrow to be a little more angled like that. It was a little too rigid um, at perfect, perfect uh, 90 degree. So that looks good. Um, but what I need to remember to do is make sure that it has the same angle there. I'm just gonna copy that angle. And then for the paper clip, you'll notice that it kind of looks like it rolls up a tad. So I'm just gonna bring it down. Set a keyframe there to just make it have a little bit, make sure it's a little bit more centered. And I'm just gonna highlight these, right click, rove across time. Um, for some reason that messed something up. I'm just gonna try that again. And I'm not sure why that's 
so messed up. What Rovacross Time does is it takes these keyframes and it just says, basically, um, don't care about where they are, just make it a smooth motion over time. So, okay, so how to get around that. I don't know what's going on. I think Rovacross Time might be glitched out in this version of After Effects. I'm just gonna create a new null object and basically marry this null to that null, hit P on the keyboard, and just copy the position keyframes onto the other one. And that obviously didn't work. And I'm just going to basically do this same animation on this other null object. I think what might be messing it up is these keyframes here. So, just looks a little bit more centered. Rove across time works well there. Okay, so now we could just select all of our keyframes by pressing U on the keyboard. For some reason these are, for this icon, are just showing way too many. And now we can start animating this. Whoa. Let's see. I'm just going to move all the positions onto this. Onto that null 8. Still kind of has like a really weird angling to it. Make sure I rove them all across time again. Okay. So you'll notice here that this little piece is not out of the way yet. So I want to make sure that that happens a little bit faster. And now I'm just gonna select all these, add some smoothing. And I'm just going to drag this one out a tad, just so you get that smooth motion there. See what happens if I do the same to the other one. I think it will still be in the way. But that doesn't look too bad, to be honest. I guess. Okay, so that looks pretty clean. Okay, so our icon is completely animated and now we can create the circle around it. So I'm just going to scale this down. No, I'm not. I should probably use this one because that's the one that's centered perfectly. And now I can create a background, layer new solid. White looks fine. Drag it to the bottom. I'm just gonna lock it. I'm just gonna make that null invisible so it doesn't get in our way. And for this icon, I can, I'm gonna change the color to kind of almost an off blue. And I'm just gonna grab the same color code and bring it over to the arrow stem paste it just so the it all has the same color. So now I'm just going to create a circle, an ellipse, and make sure the fill is set to none. We're just going to rename this to um, circle BG, so circle background. 
drag this underneath. Make sure the anchor point is centered up. You could press Y on the keyboard and drag it to the center, or you could use a tool if you have one like I do, and then you want to align it into the center, just like that. So for this background circle, I'm just going to make the color kind of like a light gray, very light gray. And let's see, let's see on the keyboard here. And what I want to do is duplicate this circle. And now I'm gonna be creating the, I guess the loading bar kind of thing. So the coloration here I'm gonna use is, I guess I'll use the same as the guy in the, in the animated GIF. I'll use green. Actually, should I change it up just to be different? Maybe I will just to be different. So I'll use green. And for this, now what I wanna do is also add a trim paths. And I think, let's see. Okay, just like that. And you could also make sure, um, I should probably set a keyframe there, but you also want to open this up and change the cap to round it again. So I'll press you on the keyboard. Oh, I set a keyframe for the wrong thing. I need an end keyframe. So press you on the keyboard. Come to the end, press J, just so it snaps to those keyframes. Set that to 100. Probably should set that to zero and add some smoothing here as well. Okay, for some reason this is not set to zero, so I'm just gonna make sure it's set to zero. And I'm just going to drag this out. And that looks good. And I'm gonna take these and drag these up. And I really, if you think about it, I really don't need a space here. So I'm just going to butt these right up and I'm going to hold alt and drag these in so to make them happen a lot faster. So kind of a check mark, paper clip type deal. Let's make sure that this is centered up as good as it can be and it doesn't look perfectly centered. So I could just go up to the position, which would be this one and just make sure that this is centered up properly. One, two, three, one, two, three, so it needs to come down. About there. And I think other than that, it is centered. Okay. So now it's time to add the little piece of paper. Um, one thing that I am noticing is that this paperclip looks way bigger than all the other icons. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just going to scale this down. I've not had any scaling properties here on this null seven. Scale that down, add the smoothing to it, and now I need to recenter it. And that looks fine. Perfect. Now I'm just going to create a little piece of paper. Actually, um, I think I've already created one. Yes, I have one already created. Um, 
Basically, this is just a rectangle. I'll open it up for you. It's just a rectangle. Um, and so what I did was I created a rectangle like that, just so you could see. And then I grabbed the pen tool. And on this rectangle, I just added some points to the path. So I went to rectangle path, right clicked convert to Bezier path. And now I could just add some points. So I just added some points and deleted the corner and then created a, a little triangle. Um, but obviously I did it in way, way more time and made it perfect. But that's basically what I did. So um, I'm just gonna use this because it's already completed. So now I have the piece of paper here and I'm just gonna scale it down and make the transparency lower so I can see what I'm doing. So that looks good. Make sure it's aligned in the center, which it is. So I'm just going to increase the transparency, rename this to paper and make it invisible for a second. So this icon here, um, what I need to do is I need to separate it into different pieces. So let's see how I can go about doing that. Um, okay, what I will do is I will, including the null eight and including the, the arrow stem, control shift C, icon layer, and that works. Make sure motion blur is set on for everything, as well as these layers. So I want the paper, or actually what I need to do first here is I need to outline and trace out part of the paper clip. So basically I'm breaking this up into two pieces the piece in front of the paper and the piece behind the paper. So this is the piece that will go behind the paper. And now I can, for this icon layer, I'm gonna hit just control D. So to duplicate that, press M on the keyboard to get my mask and I'm just gonna hit invert it. So what you notice though, is that there is a slight little cut there. So I'm just gonna open up this path layer and decrease just a tad, just barely enough to fill in that gap. And now I can take the paper, put it in between, make it visible, and now it's in between two pieces. So, okay, press P on the keyboard for the paper to move the position. So it's gonna start down here Set a keyframe. So now you just set the paper uh, down there, set a keyframe. Um, and at about this time, I'm just gonna bring this up to about there. And I could smooth this out using my tool. You can get it at uh, mountmograph.com. And I'm just gonna make this happen just kind of a little bit later. just like that. And what I should also do here, make this paper attach to, let's create a new null layer, layer new null, null object. Make all of these attached to it. And what I'm gonna do here is just kind of make this whole thing, the whole paper clip and paper kind of move up slightly. So I'm just gonna set a position keyframe there, move that to the end, just so it's nice and centered. This part is not 100% necessary, but I think that when it's centered, it will look better. Just like that, that looks pretty cool. And I think Basically, we're done. The last thing we need to do is duplicate this, the background circle, 
put it above the paper, make sure the fill is filled, and change the, um, the track mat type to alpha mat. And that way the paper kind of comes up from the bottom right up and it is not visible. So uh, let's just see what this looks like all together. Loading, check mark, and it is attached. So um, that is just a quick little animation. I know it wasn't exactly quick. I'd say probably about 30 minutes. And you, you, you know, you can add some more effects. So I'll even add some more effects here to this. Um, so let's see what we can do. I'm just going to link, make sure both of these background circles are linked together. And let's say, zoom in five frames of a scale. It's like it's being pressed. And then it bounces back to 100. Again, using the smoothing tool here. Now, you know what? I think that that looks interesting enough. So let's just leave it at that. Um, anyways, guys, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, be sure to give it a like, subscribe, check out um, the two um, awesome animators in the comments or in the comments in the description down below. Um, a lot of link to their um, Dribble accounts. So if you want to see more, be sure to click the link on screen as well as subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching.